Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation I'd like to show you how to use ANSYS HFSS to calculate the radiation characteristics of a double reflector antenna. To enable us to effectively illustrate the reflection on electrically large structures and the effect of the radome made of a dielectric material, we shall be utilising the finite element boundary integral hybrid solver. Furthermore, the curvy linear boundary elements in HFSS help you to produce good illustrations of the reflections on the reflectors. The geometry has already been constructed for this project. I'd like to go through the steps required for the solver setup procedure in some detail. First of all, I'd like to define the reflector, a flat object, as metal, i.e. I'd like to define the reflector as a perfect conductor, and this is how it's done. And as the next step, I'd like to provide a radiation boundary condition for the horn antenna and the primary reflector, which are going to be solved as a finite element. And with respect to the outer part, this will be solved as an integral equation region, and the data at the boundary will be used for a near-far field calculation. Furthermore, I need to furnish the reflector with the specific attribute of an integral equation region, and you can now see that there are two regions where integral equation regions are present, the mirror and the feed. The next thing I'd like to do is define the port, which is down there. An excitation is created at that point in the form of a wave port, and this wave port should have two modes, as we want circularly polarised waves. And that completes the setup. You also now have to specify in the initial mesh settings that curvy linear boundary elements are to be used, and an analysis setup needs to be defined and this will be at 3.4 GHz. Apart from that, we shall adopt the default settings. The setup is now ready for the solving process, and clicking the exclamation mark starts this solving process, as seen here on the progress bar. When the analysis is complete, you can define the radiation characteristics by way of post-processing. For this purpose, you need to introduce a far field setup, i.e. an infinite sphere. And as I initially want to make a 2D section, I'll just set the azimuth angle to 0 degrees. And I'll allow the other angle to go from minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees in steps of 0 0.1 degrees. And I select a local coordinate system as the reference system. It's a property of this coordinate system that the z-axis points exactly in the direction of the radiation, and this means the polar angles are well defined. I can now create a far field report in the form of a rectangular plot, and I want to display the realised gain with respect to the left-handed and right-handed polarisation in decibels. This realised gain constitutes a very complex pattern what interests us in particular is what is emitted in a forwards direction, and also the appearance of the first neighbouring columns. I therefore stipulate, as part of the post-processing process, that I only want to display everything between minus 10 degrees and 10 degrees. And here you can clearly see the radiation in a forwards direction. It has a right-handed polarisation, as that's where the realised gain is at its greatest. And in the left-handed polarisation, Virtually nothing is emitted in a forwards direction. You can also check the dimensions of the main coils by introducing an X marker at this point, and then also a second X marker. This then shows the difference, and you can see that the aperture angle is 2.2 degrees. And as a next step, you can of course also request a three-dimensional radiation pattern, 
and for this purpose I'm introducing a second infinite sphere, which will now go from 0 to 360 degrees in the azimuth angle, and in the theta it goes from 0 to 180 degrees, also in steps of 1 degree. And I once again take the radiation coordinate system as the reference system. And within realized gain, I once again want to create this report in decibels, this time for right-handed polarization. And I do this in Infinite Sphere 2, which I generated earlier. To improve the visualization, this plot can of course also be inserted into the geometry as a radiation field, which then produces this radiation pattern, i.e. almost everything is radiated in a forwards direction, bearing in mind that it's on a logarithmic scale, which is why we see all these lobes. To finish with, I'd also like to show you how you can very easily and quickly calculate antenna parameters, and so I'll go back to the radiation sphere again, where there are antenna parameters, and this is where you find common antenna parameters such as peak directivity, peak realized gain, and front to back ratio, all at a glance. And you'll also find maximum fields down here, in the corresponding directions.